What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today I'm talking about Power Automate, I'm talking about expressions, and we're looking at the string function uh, substring expression in Microsoft Power Automate. So what is substring? Substring is the ability to pass in a string um, into your flow and then select where you would like to start um, start from and end from and then pulling out the string just in the middle of those two things. <coughs> so why would you use this? Well, if you are passing in maybe a URL and you want to get the GUID out of it, you may know the entire length of the of the URL because that'll be static, but the GUID is only the last 36 characters. So you could potentially write one that will just um, start a character sort of you know 70, and then run through to uh, 106 and get those 36 characters out. So this is kind of helpful in those because then you can use that GUID later on in the flow, um, but you know you need to get that information out first. So let's take a look at this. So I'm in Power Automate now. Um, I've got my flow here, which is just a manual uh, trigger flow. Uh, and I'm going to add a new step. So I'm going to type in compose. And I just want to create a compose action, uh, this one here. And I click in the inputs. And then I'm going to click over to expressions. So in expressions, I can expand the see more here and I can get the substring um, function here, or I can just type into here sub, uh, sub and then it'll start to pull up the, uh, the expression. But in this instance, I'm just trying to click substring. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, oh, that was the other thing. So the substring here has uh, the, the characteristics of the parameters that you need to pass in for it to uh, return the results to you. So the first parameter is the text that you want to count. Then we have the start index and then we have the length. So the start index is the number of characters to count before you then start returning characters. So um, say if I have a 10 character string, I may want to return um, characters from three to eight. I am therefore going to put into the substring to actually start at uh, character uh, four, and then it'll it'll uh, sorry character two, and then it'll count everything after character two, so character three onwards uh, up to eight, which is five characters. So in that instance, I will put uh, the text uh, two a comma or the comma after the text two, and then comma after the um, two, and then the length of like five, and that would return it. So let's do this here. So I'm going to switch over to the dynamic content and I'm going to use one of the inputs. So I'm going to use this first text input here. Then we'll add a comma and then we'll get this pop-up menu to say um, these are the parameters that we need. So then we're going to put in the parameter of say 2 and then we're going to put another comma and then we're going to run till 5. Um, so so we've got the so the the We've got the text coming in from the substring here, which is the text from the input. Then we've got a comma. Then we've got the, the starting time, uh, the starting character. So from two, so that'll count characters three onwards. And then we have five. So that's kind of important. It'll count characters three onwards. It won't count, count from character two onwards. Um, and then it'll count five characters from three to um, five more. So if we're happy with our expression, we can click OK. And that'll put the expression in here into the compose action. If I click on test and choose I'll perform the action, we'll get our inputs. So in this instance, I'm actually going to use numbers because it'll be a bit easier for us to count. So I'll put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So in our expression, we chose this is the input, and then the character start um, the start index number was two. So it'll skip over one and two and it'll start counting from three onwards. So what it should do is it'll count three and then it'll go up five places. So it'll count three, four, five, six, and seven. So what this should return is three, four, five, six, and seven. And it won't return the eight, nine, it won't return the one and two. So we'll click run flow. Uh, we can see it runs successfully. You can see the output is three, four, five, six, seven. So that's a really, really useful function because you may know the length of a string, but you only need a certain part of it so that you can um, get that out and then use that elsewhere. So what do you guys think? 
Is this a function that you guys use all the time or something that you have newly discovered? Let me know in the comments down below. If you could like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd be very appreciated. If you haven't already, please add me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, I always love to hear people's stories about uh, Power Automate and what you're doing with your flows. Uh, and yeah, I will see you next time.